Scientists' shocking new discovery in pyramids turns everything upside down. Known simply as the Egyptian pyramids, these colossal stone structures are scattered throughout Egypt, of which 118 are believed to be standing and another 100 to have been built. The oldest of these pyramids, and incidentally, the largest, the Great Pyramid of Giza, has survived for over 4,000 years. The idea of him building a 450-footed structure out of limestone seems nearly impossible, but now he's in the 21st century. The question arises, how did they do it in ancient Egypt? All cards consist of sophisticated technology that is far ahead of its time and can serve even from a galaxy far, far away. People have come up with all sorts of theories to explain the construction of the pyramids. For example, Elon Musk shocked everyone when he tweeted that pyramids aren't mystical and that he has a perfectly logical explanation for how they were built. With the help of modern technology, new discoveries made by scientists have finally revealed the answer to this mysterious phenomenon of how the pyramids were built. What was the ingenious system the Egyptians invented and used that made all this possible? These are the shocking discoveries from researchers that will blow your mind. You can pick a movie based on ancient Egypt and find endless scenes of a tyrannical pharaoh yelling at his slaves to work harder, faster, or better overall at his pyramid. This scene is pretty typical of a bully demanding an excruciating amount of work. By the power of slaves who have no choice but to submit because they are cursed with a life of service to pharaohs and everyone, your master could definitely be. It might seem more plausible that the 400-foot structure was built by humans over 40 years against their will. However, recent evidence suggests that dedicated labor was indeed destined to build the pyramids. Researchers suggest that dedicated labor was used to build the pyramids. I found some important evidence to their theories was supported by discoveries of ancient cities, burial grounds at the foot of the pyramids, and animal corpses. It suggests that the labor force was fed like royalty, even if a group of slaves was involved in the construction. The entire project could not have been done without some technical intervention. Basically, someone had to teach them how to do it in order for them to actually do it. There's now more evidence that the pyramids were built by dedicated workers. There is. This is especially confirmed by the fact that a cemetery was discovered at the foot of the pyramid. It suggests that anyone who died building masonry was treated with honor. As the scientist has revealed, building the pyramids was his three-step process. Step 1. Choosing a building site to build your pyramid. You need the perfect building site. After all, pyramids have long been used to serve as the final burial place of the pharaohs, so the best way starts with choosing a location. In addition to engineering considerations, high plateau, river flooding, and climatic considerations, workers also determined that location would affect sunrise and sunset, distance from pharaoh's palace, and pharaoh's eventual resurrection from death. Other factors also had to be considered, such as weather too. All very important things to consider. The construction sites of each pyramid were close to the Nile, and interestingly, they were all built west of the Nile. Because the ancient Egyptians believed that if a burial place was located where the sun sets, i.e. in the west, it would increase the chances of returning to the afterlife. Next, we had to consider the rising water level of the river. The pyramids are mostly made of limestone, which can be washed away by the tides. I had to watch out for the flooding of the river. After all, the pyramids were built in honor of the presiding pharaoh, who regularly visited the site, so the location had to be close to the palace. But it was too close. Don't go. The next step was to prepare the site. The ancient pyramids of Egypt are very old, but these are the only surviving of the seven wonders of the world. Interestingly, they are also the oldest candidates on this list. The workers behind them deserve all the credit. If they had started construction on loose sand, he wouldn't have built one of the world's tallest and most iconic sites. Workers began construction by laying the foundations. They remove loose sand from the bottom, level the surface, and then apply a limestone base. Another interesting piece of information about the Egyptians is that although the compass was invented thousands of years later, the ancient Egyptians developed their own method of finding the true north and true south. Workers began construction by noting the position of stars in the northern hemisphere. They then follow the path of the style until a bisecting path is determined to find the south using their right angle. Workers determine east and west, prepare the site, and perhaps it takes a lot of time to eventually become the foundation of the entire structure, which must withstand over 2 million blocks of limestone on top of it. The final step was to lift the blocks above each other. Finally, workers had to develop a way to stack the blocks on top of each other. The pyramids we see today have blocks stacked at specific angles. 
However, these blocks all over 20 feet tall. How did workers find a way to lift cranes when they were still in a fantasy world? Current evidence supports two theories, ram theory and water shaft theory. The ram theory is generally supported by more weighty evidence, but the good theory makes sense as well. Given the ramp theory, wouldn't the Anglo Limits team have found evidence of a ramp-like mechanism that could suggest the limestone blocks were lifted using ramps? The idea of using slopes was debated long before the final discovery, but was always ignored. For the ram to lift more than a million blocks of limestone, it needs to be fairly stable, and the 20 degree angle has to be pretty steep as well. We must give more credit to the workers who succeed in building the Greater Pyramids of Giza. The team found a steep ramp with stairs running sideways. These stairs were perforated at irregular intervals, possibly indicating a pulley system for pumping water. Why did you need water? Workers used a combination of wet sand to move the limestone blocks from where they were carved to where the pyramids were built, so it took a lot of manpower to carry the huge and heavy limestone blocks. Passing others is 40 years late. Again, we need to give our workforce more credit. However, the water shaft theory completely ignores the ramp theory and instead consists of a system of interconnected channels and a series of moats that can be used and controlled by another series of gates to carry limestone blocks upwards. Focused. Even in ancient Egypt, this idea never seems complicated. But hey, we're talking about a stonemason who made something that has stood the test of time for 4,000 years. Blocks were transported from site to pyramid sites on floats made of papyrus-wrapped cedarwood or expanded animal skins. These floats were attached to rocks and hoisted from the shore. A series of canals were built to lift the blocks. The canal led to a ditch, which circled the site. Four of these were actually built at the time, and the blocks can be floated on top. These channels were widened as the pyramids grew, and were controlled by a series of gates that determined the distance blocks traveled from the trenches to the tops of the pyramids. There is a puddle on top for further swimming and positioning without interference. Water shaft theory may seem complicated, but it offers an easy way to stack and transport limestone blocks. This theory is supported by the irregular structure found on all four sides of the structure and the signature water system. 